I want to teach you some basics of multi-arm bandits. So multi-arm bandits are a type of algorithm named after gambling machines. So let's say you walk into a casino and you see a row of one-arm bandits. So these are machines that have an arm. You pull the arm and with some probability it gives you a reward. Okay, so and in a multi-arm bandit, you could think of it just as a machine with multiple arms. Now, some of the arms have higher probabilities of rewards than other arms. So what should your strategy be when you walk into the casino, right? You only have a limited time and you want to you want to get as much rewards as possible. Now, if you knew which arm was the best, you would go ahead and pick that one all the time. But the problem is you don't. You don't know which arm's the best. And so you have to balance your time between exploring arms that might be good and exploiting arms that you know are good, right? So after a while, you get to figure out which arms are good and then you want to exploit those more often. So uh, the whole idea about multi-arm bandit algorithms is that there are a trade-off between exploration and exploitation. Exploring arms that might be good exploiting arms that you know are good. Okay, so there, you, you might think this is just a theoretical exercise, but it's not. Uh, Multi-arm bandit algorithms are some of the most popular and widely used and most powerful algorithms in existence for machine learning. Now, the, uh, the applications for them are things like uh, serving advertisements or newspaper articles to people uh, um, online. So for instance, let's say that there are, you know, um, 30 different advertisements that the that could be offered to a person on social media. Well, which arm should we offer the person? Well, um, we need to explore which uh, advertisements are better than other ones and more or more effective than other ones. And maybe we would serve those more often. The ones that are good, we would serve those more often. And the reward we would get back is that the user would click on the ad, for instance, or that there would be some conversion where the user would purchase a product that was being advertised. Now, uh, also website optimization. So let's say you have a website and you're trying to optimize the way it looks so that it's more functional and more um, aesthetic or whatever. So the different arms would be possible website options and you could sort of edit your website as the users are going to the website and, and, and use the, you know, explore different configurations of the website to see which configurations are getting better user engagement. So you have some measure of user engagement that you're using as your reward. Uh, another application is clinical trials. Um, so the arms would be possible medications. So let's say you had 20 possible medications and you wanted to test them in a clinical trial. Um, and the reward would be some kind of health outcome. So at the beginning, you might give patients all, all of these different 20 drugs. And then after a while, you might realize that, hey, some of these drugs are not working very well. And then those drugs would, would disappear from the clinical trial. And then it would continue to... Um, uh, exploit the drugs that it thinks are good. So it would use those more often to try to figure out which of the remaining options are most effective. And uh, it's an alternative, multi-arm bandits are an alternative to massive A-B testing. Because typically in a cl clinical trial, you would test out drug A versus drug B, right? But um, here, you're trying all the drugs at once, and instead of you know waiting till the end of the trial to do all, co all the pairwise comparisons, if you figure out early on that a drug isn't working, you can exclude it. Um, and then you can have more trials for drugs that um, seem to be potentially working well. Now, you could claim that multi-arm bandits are part of the reason for the um, demise of democracy as we know it, because multi-arm bandits are controlling what people see on social media because they're trying to optimize for user engagement. So these algorithms, even the, the ones I'll show you, they might seem simple, but they're actually very powerful and they can be very destructive when applied in the right way. But me teaching you about them, that's not, that's not going to be destructive. <laughs> in fact, it's better if you know how they work so that if you get control of the kind of data and the kind of resources that social media companies have, you might be able to save our world. Okay, so I'm going to give you some algorithms for multi arm bandits. The first is the upper confidence bound algorithm. It's called UCB. Okay, so the way the UCB algorithm works is that there's a starting phase where you initialize all the arms because you you know you just walked into the casino you don't know which arm's the best so you pull each arm once okay and in doing so you get some idea just some sort of baseline for uh, the rewards for each of the arms okay so this is the starting phase of UCB so let's we have five arms let's pull all of them once um, here are the the confidence we have confidence intervals for each arm that are very very wide because we don't know anything about these arms so we start with these super wide confidence intervals. Okay, so we pull all the arms once and we learn something about the rewards for each arm. 
uh, in doing so. Okay, that's our starting point. And then for the rest of the algorithm, we simply choose the arm with the highest upper confidence bound. This is the whole algorithm. Okay, so let's do it. The arm with the highest upper confidence bound is arm four. Okay, that's the arm that could potentially be the best because it has the highest upper confidence bound. Okay, so we pick that arm and we learn something about it and its confidence interval um, shrinks. So then um, it looks like arm five could potentially be the best. So we, we pick that one. Now let's say maybe it's arm one. We learn something about that arm. That arm looks pretty promising. Okay, and then arm one again. Oh, the confidence interval shrunk down a little bit. Okay, now it seems to be a three-way tie. So let's pick one of them. Let's say arm three, and then uh, maybe arm one, and then arm five, and three, three again, one. It's like a horse race here. Okay, one, and then you know it keeps going. Oh, arm four is in the play. Anyway, okay, so it, it keeps going and going until we get a very good estimate of the arm's mean reward, okay? We're looking for the arm's mean reward. We get a very good estimate of it. And when we figure out that, once we figure out that a particular arm's mean reward is higher than the other arm's mean rewards could be, the algorithm, just by following the upper confidence bound, ends up choosing that same arm over and over and over again for eternity. Okay, so that's how these algorithms work or at least that, that's how UCB works. Let's talk about the other algorithm that I want to introduce today, which is Epsilon Greedy. So Epsilon Greedy is an alternative to UCB. It's a, a different multi-arm bandit algorithm, just as simple though. In the starting phase, we again initialize all the arms, but here we keep track of, instead of a confidence interval, we keep track of an estimate of the mean reward for each arm. Okay, so we pick all the arms once, Okay, so, and then we initialize the estimates of the mean reward for each arm. So that, the value right there, that is the, um, our estimate for arm one's mean reward. And I put T there, but the truth is that T equals one because we're on the very first iteration. Okay, so um, that's the second arm. Here's the third arm, fourth arm, and the fifth arm. All right, now, Second phase, we're going to randomly choose arms for a while. So this is only exploration. So we're just, just exploring arms, that's it, just to learn more about them. Okay, so let's say that we pick arm two, and then its mean reward ends up going down as a result because the reward we got was lower than the estimated mean from earlier. X4 we pick, we adjust its mean reward, X1. Okay, great. So uh, now, um, for the remainder of epsilon greedy, with probability epsilon t, which I haven't told you what that is yet, probability epsilon t, play an arm uniformly at random, so explore. Otherwise, play the arm you think is the best, which is exploit, okay? So with probability epsilon t, we explore, otherwise we exploit, which is to play the best arm. Okay, so for epsilon t, I haven't given you the formula, I'll give you that formula later, but for now, I want you to think of it as, as a constant divided by t. So I want you to think of the probability of exploration kind of decaying over time as 1 over t. So after a long, long time, you won't really do much exploring. You're going to do most of your exploring at the beginning. Okay, so you'll see that here. Um, I'm going to flip a coin, and um, it, the probability of the coin uh, landing on heads is 0.85, okay? And so in that case, I happen to roll a one, or well, it's, you know, I flip a flip a heads or whatever it is, and I explore. Okay, because again, if I roll a one, I explore. If I roll a zero, I'm going to exploit. Okay, so I explore. So let's explore uh, arm one. That'll bring its mean down a little bit. Okay, now epsilon is 0.8, with probability 0.8, I explore. Otherwise, I exploit. I rolled a one, so I explore. Right, I had an 80% chance of rolling a one, so. Okay, so I pull arm five. Okay, and then um, my chance of, on this iteration, I roll a one again, which I would have done with probability 0.75. So I'm still exploring. And now at this point, um, with a probability of 0.7, I rolled a zero, so I exploited. So I decided to choose the arm that was the best, which in this case is arm one. 
and that happened to bring its mean down. I guess arm one was kind of lucky at the beginning. Okay, so again, I continue doing this. And after a while, um, the epsilons are going to get really, really small, and your probability of explore of the probability of exploring is going to get very, very low. So here, I pretty much always end up exploiting. So here, I roll a zero and I exploit. So I'm going to choose arm one, and its mean reward is essentially right on top of what I estimated because, of course, I've I've already played many, many rounds of this game, and so I have a very good estimate of arm one's mean reward. Okay, and so. Um, I could I keep going like this, and um, you know it might be there might be some variation here, but I have a very good estimate of arm one's mean reward, which is important. Okay, so for for this particular uh, game, um, I I'm then done because I basically just keep exploiting the arms that I know are the best over and over and over again. Okay, so let me give you a formal a formal statement of epsilon greedy here. So the input is the number of rounds that you're going to play for, the number of arms, a constant k, which is bigger than two quantities, <laughs> two mysterious looking quantities, and then epsilon. And now you can think about the epsilon as being one for a while and decaying as um, a, a, like one over t, constant over t. Okay, So it's one for a while, so you always explore, and then you start exploiting, and then at the end you just exploit, exploit, exploit. Okay, so we initialize. By playing all the arms once, initializing our estimates of the mean reward, and then for the remainder of the time, with probability epsilon t, we play an arm uniformly at random, so exploring. Um, each arm has probability 1 over m of being selected, because m is the number of arms. And then otherwise, with probability 1 minus epsilon t, we exploit. We choose the arm which, is, which has the best estimated mean reward. So arm j there has a mean reward that is estimated to be larger than any of the other mean rewards for all of the other arms. Okay, so then you actually see what happened, you get your reward xjt, and then you update your estimated, um, the mean for that arm. Okay, so let me give you um, the formal statement for UCB. The input is the number of rounds n, the number of arms m. We play all arms once and initialize the mean rewards. Now for the remainder of the time, you play the arm with the highest upper confidence bound on the mean estimate. And this is the formula for the upper confidence bound here. Uh, the formula for the denominator there, tj, t minus 1, that's just the number of times we've played arm j up until now. And then after you figure out which arm to play, you play that arm, you see the reward, and then you update your estimate of the mean reward. Okay. So again, I'm just going to go back to the um, back to the applications here. It's it's crazy how these simple algorithms can lead to huge amounts of money being being made in advertising, and how it can, they can these simple algorithms can really change the way you behave because they're optimizing the way you interact with social media. Um, it's also amazing how they can give you you know much more clinical, much more efficient clinical trials, and even potentially you could, like I said, blame the demise of democracy on them. And if you're ready to hear more, in the next video, I'll give you a little bit of theory about multi-armed bandits. Thanks.